we're gonna tie a crab fly. I've had a lot of luck just walking the beach here in front of El Pescador. Um, not a lot of luck because the fish are really tough here, but, I, but I've had some luck fishing a little olive crab fly to these really picky but pretty good sized bonefish right along the beach. So I need some more olive crabs. I'm gonna tie a couple of them. Um, the crab is a pretty simple fly. It takes a little time to tie, but it's, uh, it's really just uh, rubber legs and some plain old wool yarn. So, and some bead chain eyes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut some bead chain eyes. And the actually, the eyes you put on a crab pattern are op, the opposite end of where the real eyes on a crab are, but you add them mainly for weight. So um, I'm using bead chain. I don't want lead eyes or metal eyes because I don't want the fly to make a big plop in the shallow water. So I'm starting with the hook in the standard position on the vise, and I'm going to lay myself a little bed of tight thread on the hook. And I'm going to position the bead chain eyes on the top, right toward the front, and I'm going to figure eight through the eyes very tightly, as tight as I can without breaking the thread. I'm going to go around a whole bunch of different ways, just figure eighting around different directions, getting it really tight. And then the secret to keeping these eyes from rolling on the fly is to come around the base and go around underneath the eyes, but on top of the hook shank with lots and lots of pressure. Now I'll wind back to the bend of the hook. And I want to put a couple claws on here. I noticed the crabs in the shallows have black claws. I'm going to take a double strand of this black rubber leg and I'm going to tie a knot in both ends. Give you, gives you a little joint for the claw, like that. Just a single overhand knot. And then a knot at the other end, like that. And I'll cut it in half. So these are going to be my claws that are sticking out the back end of the crab. You try to tie them on the side so that they stick out to the sides. When crabs are, when crabs are in the shallows around the bottom, when they're in a defensive posture, they raise their claws like this. So we want it to look as natural as possible. And I'll get the other leg in there. Hopefully it'll face the other way. And later on we'll slit those so they open up and look like a claw, but we won't worry about that right now. So I got those secured. We got the legs in place. Now we got to start the body. And that's just an old piece of wool yarn. This piece looks like it's about 100 years old. And I'm going to take this yarn. The yarn is, is twisted. It's four strands. And I want the yarn to be to be soft and fluffy. I don't, want, I, don't want to get, I don't want to get segments in the finished fly. I want it to look like to one, I want it to look like one smooth claw. So what I'm going to do is just take a, something rough and I'm going to just score this to fluff it up like that. Mustache comb would work well, a dubbing needle, something like that. Just so you get the, the fibers all untwisted as best you can. And I'm going to tie the piece is in with a single figure eight because you don't want big lumps of thread there. So I'm going to just make one figure eight to hold it in place. Nice tight figure eight. And then I'm going to take a couple of locking turns in front. You might do two figure eights. You might do one figure eight. So I got a bunch of yarn in there. The next thing I'm going to do is tie in a leg. And I'm using a little bit different leg. I'm using a kind of an olivey silicone leg, speckled black, that looks like the crabs that are here in the shallows in front of El Pescador. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put that right up against the yarn and then carefully figure eight the legs, get them in position where I want them. I want them to slant back a little bit. And then the same as the yarn, I'm just going to put a couple locking turns up against there. That'll hold pretty well. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm scoring some yarn, second bunch of yarn, and you'll Put as many bunches of yarn as you can in here. Then I'll put in a second pair of legs. I'm only going to put in four legs, two on each side. You get the effect. 
you get the stuff sticking out, wiggling back. You're going to be moving this through the water, so the fish aren't going to aren't going to, to see the legs uh, totally, anyways. And to worry about putting eight legs in this fly is uh, is overkill. All right, so I got the the second pair of legs in there. Then I'm going to come in and whip finish. I don't have a whip finish tool, so I'm going to hand whip finish five times. There we go. I'm used to using a whip finish tool and not hand whip finishing. And then put a dubbing needle or a pair of scissors in there, draw it tight, tighten up on that thread. Now again, a lot of people will put a drop of head cement on there or super glue. I'm not going to because I'm going to fish these flies today and if they fall apart, I don't really care as long as I get a couple of fish on them. Okay, so then you take it out of the vise, and if I had a mustache comb or a toothbrush or something, I would fuzz this yarn up more at this point, and I'll try the best I can with these rusty pair of forceps, just to get all the yarn to kind of blend together. That's looking a little better. So I've got a big fuzzy, big fuzzy thing. Now the key to trimming this to shape without cutting the legs off is pretty easy. I'll just take one side and I'll fold the legs over, get it through the yarn, find the leg, fold them both over, make sure the yarn comes back. So now I got the legs out of the way. And now I can trim this yarn without cutting my legs off. And I'm going to trim this fairly small. The crab, I, I want a fairly small pattern. I don't want a big crab. I think the fish are less suspicious of smaller flies. And these bonefish here out in front of El Pescador are pretty suspicious. They, they've got a lot of flies thrown at them. I want to be as subtle as I can. So I got my, my shape there. And then I'll do the other side, same way. Pull the legs over, get them out of the way. Got the legs out of the way, and then I'll trim this to shape. And then finally, I'll unslit these two claws. There. One, two. The crab's going to ride upside down because the bead eyes are on the bottom, so it's going to tend not to hook on the bottom. Throw it right on the sand or on some grass. And um, the claws are up in the defensive posture, and when this thing gets pulled through the water, the legs wiggle. So that's your little crab fly, olive crab, very simple fly. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this and you want to see more, subscribe and you can get all our weekly uploads.